By now, we will do everything in our power to get your heart beating, right? Not just us, we're going to have a sound off at about 12 o'clock in this area where we are. We're going to try and find the loudest car here. And I, my money's on the GT4. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, do you reckon, am I allowed to enter? Because I've got quite an obnoxious exhaust on my Subaru, so am I allowed to enter the competition? No, I'm judging. 100%. I brought my fake Lamborghini Countach, and that's what requires me to do a Shambagini, a Lamborghini. And my car sadly has one of these modern irrelevant on it, so it sounds right once you're going, but well, I'm not, not to stay. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you who we have got a star today chatting to, we wander over the minute. Sporting Bears. Now, I see Sporting Bears at all different car shows and they do fantastic work, don't they? They're here. Oh, all amazing. the money that they get in donations goes 100% to the charity. I think I think it starts at 20 quid a ticket. Yes. It's about a 20 minute ride in a supercar, but in fact we'll go over and some cars yeah. Let's explain to you guys how it works. So if you want to feel good about raising money for charity, so these guys donate their time, their cars, their fuel, their insurance. So every penny you make and you donate to Sporting Bears goes to the charities. So you get to ride in any of their amazing cars. They'll take you on a 20 minute run. You make a donation for that. All of that money goes. You get to have all the fun of experiencing the car. You get to feel good about raising money for charity. It's literally a win, win, win. Do you reckon, Sam? 100%. I mean, these guys have worked the whole lives with these cars, and they are just here to share that experience with you. I mean, some of these cars, you would never, ever have the opportunity to, especially as it's going to charity too. I think that's an amazing thing to do. Yeah, you can see this McLaren getting lined up there. That is a beautiful way to drive around. There's some incredible classics, kit cars, just cool stuff. You can make your donation, you can go for a drive and you can just enjoy it. Have fun, meet some lovely people and feel good about the whole process. Who's going to tell us? Yeah, Mark, come on, what's happening today? How many people have you signed up so far this morning? Uh, me personally, only three so far, but we'll sell quite a few rides today. I don't know how many we'll sell in total, but... Hundreds. And tell us, just all the people that are here, let's just do a quick roll call of the amazing cars you've got. So if you want to make a donation, what kind of money are we talking and what kind of cars can we ride in? So we're talking anywhere from about 15 pounds to 60 pounds per car and you can fill all the seats in the car. So if it will take four passengers, that's four passengers for the donation that you give to us. Every penny that you give to us, even if you pay the credit card, will go to Julia's house, the local hospice. Because we pay the credit card fees. Wow, good lads, good lads. I just need to clarify something. You said every seat will be filled. I'm assuming we can't drive this car. You said every passenger seat. Every passenger seat. Can I ask as well? I mean, I've seen you guys at a number of events, and you're so un you're selfless in what you do. How good do you feel knowing that you're not only you're bringing out some fantastic cars, you're making great money for a really good reason? How's it make you feel? It's Father's Day, of course, so uh, it's a special day. Well, it, it does make you feel good, but it's fun. You know, these are our own cars, we turn up, this is how we enjoy ourselves. And we put smiles on our own faces because we're driving along talking to people about our cars who paid for us to listen, or to, to pay to listen to us talk about cars. We put smiles on their faces and then we put smiles on the faces of the charities that get the money. And I'm assuming this McLaren's going to be very popular. I mean, I've driven one of these and they are very quick and a beautiful car. That is very popular. And if you can't afford the £60 to go in that today, you can buy a raffle ticket for us from us for £2. And we'll have a raffle, see if you can get a ride in that car. So you say it starts at £15. I'm not going to prejudge which car that is, but what can a customer get for... Oh, I used to have one of those, a 205 GTI. Let me tell you, they, they're worth a fortune now. And it's the 1.9 version, which is a bit special. That's what I had, and I started for three grand, and now I'm at 50 grand. Well, so let me just give you a few prices, guys. Let me give you some runners and riders. I have a few problems with the mics, so apologies. So the McLaren is 60 quid, a Ferrari Porto Fino, 50 quid, an M5 Tom, 40 quid. A really, really lovely hybrid of a Ford and Subaru that have made a love child, the Impressport. That looks like a lot of fun for 30 quid. There's a Ferrari Tribute 250 short wheelbase for 25 quid. Amazing stuff, Ford Mustang for 40. There's a Ferrari 360 for 40, an E-Type Rosa for 40. Catering, and that will be a lot of fun for 25 quid. What I'm thinking with all these, these feel like very good price points for a Father's Day gift, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, absolutely. Treat your fathers and dads for a ride. You take mum as well, you know, let's not be uh, completely exclusive about this. So come down, see our friends at Sporting Bears, literally for 15 quid, you can be like you and you can cruise around in a 1.925, which is a very nice way to travel. There will be no speeding, we'd like to point that out. All drivers are very responsible and very legal. I don't have any points on their license, Jewin. 
I'm not going to put any pressure on anyone, Sam, but um, he's got a very good looking car here today. I don't know whether he might do some little rides later. He's looking at me and I'll say, there's no petrol in it. But tell us a bit about the car you bought, because it's mega. So years ago, growing up, I've, I've loved you know, the, the moving side of cars, to me, is, is really important because I think the love for cars comes from either family having one of the cars or a film you've seen. And Cannibal Run, for me, was one of my favourite films. And seeing the Kumpdash really kind of pushed me in the corner of... Hello. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So I'm never going to be able to afford a real one. They're like half a million pounds now. Well, for Asda's own smart price version is here today. But I was last weekend at the Gump Rally, probably the most exclusive rally in the world, with my, with my fake Kuntash. And I was the first car to go across the line in uh, at London at the Gumball, which is pretty cool. I was just saying, it doesn't, it does it. I mean, to, to most people walking down the road, if they see that coming, that's a supercar. And obviously it's a, it's a kit car, but nonetheless, even these kit cars go for good money now. Yeah, I mean, a, a kit car like this can range anywhere between 20 to 30 pounds a pound for a, a, a project vehicle, up to 100 pounds a pound. And if you think, well, a real one is probably half a million and you wouldn't really want to leave it in the car park and you'd be a bit worried, well, this car, you can change your spark plugs yourself, you can service it yourself, it's usable and it looks exactly the same. You know, there's, there's a few small details that a real connoisseur can tell is slightly different, but overall, 99 that part of stick is the same, you know, so it's not... Being top on, well, down it. issues with his mics, we do apologise, I'm going to walk a bit closer. Now Sam, this GT40 here, I went to Le Mans last week in something very similar, and I was surprised actually it wasn't too uncomfortable, because you're almost laying down in it, but it was loud, and it smelled of fumes and petrol, and I got out with a bit of a headache, but for me, that's what motoring's all about. 100%. When, when you look at this car, this is everything you can imagine growing up. I mean, it's the most iconic golf livery. This could be a Mark II, I'm not 100% sure. You've got snorkels like a Mark II on the back. Um, but one little thing, Dan Gurney, who won Le Mans numerous of times, the bubble on the head's called a Gurney bubble, because he was too tall to actually get in the car. So that bubble actually allowed him to have a little bit of head room. This car is very special for a couple of reasons. First of all, we're looking at the wheels. These are a knockoff wheel, so basically not as in a knockoff sham wheel. The wheel itself is removable by one actual whack of a copper. Is it a copper or a lead hammer? It's normally a lead hammer. Uh, copper or leather. Copper or leather. There you go. So this car here, you know, you've got the, the ITBs. Are they independent? I'm going to hand the mic over to the man that actually knows what he's talking about. Yeah, so um, yeah, so they're replica Halibrand wheels, uh, knockoff um, uh, spinners. Uh, it's a Ford 302, 5.7 litre stroke engine with fuel injection. Um, it, it's actually a Mark One, but it's got the Mark Two snorkels on it, which is not strictly correct for it. Um, but it's done up in the livery of the 1969 Le Mans winning car uh, for Jackie Ips and uh, uh, and, and Oliver. Um, so it's a tornado replica built in 2009. It's an amazing car, and just the, the feel of it to me. You've got the rear, the bulge rear arches here. How does it feel to drive that car? Obviously, a little bit like this. You get them all turning their heads and looking at it. But how does it feel to drive? Is it a comfortable car? Um, well, I'm, I'm six foot two. I've had to have the gurney bubble put in, and, 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 and the uh, floor pan dropped in order to fit, fit in there. But actually, it's quite a comfortable driving position now. But I think, as you said earlier, it's it's smelly. Uh, lots of fumes, um, it's very raw, um, you know, gear change is always a, a little bit uh, tricky on it, um, but it's, it's, it's incredible fun. There's a, there's a couple of details I've noticed that you've spent quite a bit of money on little things which people can actually tell in the community. So you've got the aluminium uh, individual fuel caps either side, which a lot of those do a fiberglass replacement just to make it look okay. And the Hartwell latches, they, they look like they're real Hartwell latches as well. Yes, they are, and, and, and that's, it. that's exactly how they should be. Um, the other thing on the car that's a little bit unique is all of the uh, uh, stickers or decals, they're all painted on. They're all airbrushed on under the lamp. 
We, we were talking amongst ourselves earlier before we had uh, a half working mic put in our, our hands. And this is no disrespect to Tesla who can hear me over there because I also own one of those as well. But it saddens me a little bit nowadays when you see a conference you're saying with enthusiasm about the fumes, it's raw, the noise. I've got a modern car up there, the RS6, and I love it, but it doesn't feel like I'm driving it. It's got so many computer aids. Sam, what do you think about in terms of the modern day cars? Oh, uh, unfortunately, are we moving away from this because you can't get things like this anymore? Well, this year, uh, me and the British Motor Show, we have been working together with using something called Corotin Fuel, which is built by a company called Sustain, or the other way around. And it allows us to still maintain and use our vehicles, but on a fuel that is sustainable. So it's not, I believe it's zero uh, carbon. So basically, when a plant grows, it absorbs carbon dioxide and produces oxygen. When that plant is chopped down and degraded, it's made into a fuel. So the carbon dioxide has already been used, so that when the car deploys the carbon dioxide, it is basically neutral, if that makes sense. So, so the future the future isn't just electric, is what you're saying. We're going to be all right. Well, for me, I, I think it's really important that these cars here give you that 3D aspect of how it should be with a, with a car because you go to a static car show like this and you're really lucky to see these cars sat here in all their glory but the sporting bears are actually allowing you to have that 3D element, the smell, the nostalgia, the feel of the horsepower but pushing you back in a chair and you're never going to get that with electric. Well there you go, that was all good wasn't it? <laughs> I made so many factual errors, he's punching me on the ribs to the right, saying, you're getting it all wrong, Sam. Um, so yeah, come have a chat to this lovely man, he knows. Talk to me a little bit about Coratin, that's all right. I just want to know, it's, is, it, is it zero, is it neutral, is it sustainable? Tell me how it works. Okay, it, it, basically the fuel is identical to an ordinary fuel that you get uh, on the forecourt. So, it, so the, the molecule is all the same, it's just they come from a biogenic origin, in other words, they're taking CO2 out of the atmosphere, as you said, through plants and making the fuel. Um, so, in terms of, of, of how much of the carbon in the fuel is, it, is recycled, well, it can be anything up to 100%. It depends when you blend the fuel, sometimes you have to put in some other components which are from crude oil base. So, it could be 60, 70, 80, 90%, but it could even be 100%. And that's, that's, what, uh, that's what's being worked on at the moment to maximise that. Come down to the motor show, you don't have to be a rocket scientist, but it helps. Wow. I, I never knew, I don't, first of all, I never knew that was your company. No wonder you own nine cars, you're doing well enough. Um, but how much pride does your car here, the GT40, bring you in terms of, you, you do have a big car collection, you could have come here in, in a number of cars today. Why this one? Um, I just think it's very iconic and of course last weekend uh, there was a very important race going on in France so it just seemed very timely to, uh, to, 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 to bring a Le Mans face the car down. I was there, hence I still haven't got my voice back, but um, Sam, beautiful car. What, what, today, what are you excited about doing here today? We're gonna, we're gonna, if the mic allows us, we'll have a go, go that way soon. I think that's the thing here is whether the mic will allow us to go that far. The big thing for me is the variety of cars here today. There's a little bit of everything. A lot of 80s cars which I love. You've got the Ferrari over there. I'm loving the modern stuff as well, but it's the mix. To me it's the mix, the excitement. I'm loving the kit cars as well. I'm a big kit car fan. The 350Z, yeah, I mean, that, that's been modified to an inch of its life. I mean, a lot of time, money and effort has gone into that car, for example. Look, maybe not everyone's cup of tea, but for the youngsters around us, the root boys, I mean, that's mega. Well, I grew up during the Max Power era, I'm sure you guys remember that very, very well. So it's cars that have a huge amount of work and a massive degree of personalisation. And they really are unique to that owner. Because like you said, the amount of time and effort goes into a car like that. And to that owner, what a beautiful job he's done, what a lovely execution. And the world needs different motorcars, doesn't it? If we all drove the same car, the world would be a very boring place. And of course, Sam, we are, the three of us, looking for car of the show today. So we would be walking around choosing our personal favourite and it will be a winner today. It could be that. Can we just say we're all quite easily bribed as well. We'd like to put that out there. If you have entered a car in the show and show today, if we are going to be judging later, we are susceptible to, to money, uh, donuts, free drinks. So all of these things can put around judging out. But I just want to make that obvious and transparent to everybody. Exactly. And guys, I know we're talking about replicas and we're talking about modified cars and we're talking about Mustangs and Teslas. But over the back there, Belinda and the team over there have got these replica BMW Z3s, okay? 
And the cars just there, so you've got a Ferrari, another Ferrari, I believe, and then like another, well, they're all Ferraris today, there's normally some other cars here, but these are all Z3 BMWs with body kits, and they are so cool, and they're like a very cheap and sustainable way of getting a classic looking car, but with not too much altercations, so you build it in the garage. So obviously you don't even have to tell the DVLA really, because it's still the same car underneath, you've got all the integrity of the car that's built onto, and also, if you wanted to buy a short wheelbase Ferrari, you know, you wouldn't need an awful lot of money. Like, a big house for you, and you could build something like that for maybe 30 or 40 grand for that kind of standard. And what way to travel? Exactly that, and we were having a bit of a laugh the other day. So, you know, there's people out there that have got this set to a 20, 30 grand car, and they take it in a nerve over it, they throw it around, and if they crash it up, they crash it up. Yeah. Then at the 100 to 150 grand mark, you get the people that don't really want to drive their cars, so a bit worried about the money and that sort of stuff and damaging it. And then you jump to like two million pounds when you go to the Ferrari 250s, and they're burning around go uh, Goodwood like they're like Austin Metros. Well, I think that's that yeah. real money you know. Yeah, and also most of the people driving the cars around Goodwood aren't the owners. No, that's the thing. It's very, very rich and successful yeah. racing drivers. Well, you know, tell us about your garage. You've got some lovely stuff in your garage. What is your favourite car at the moment? Because people that have more than one car don't have a favourite car. They have a favourite car of the moment. What's your favourite car of the moment? Well, my favourite car of the moment is in bits. So I was hoping to come here today, but I've got a 1950 Ford F1 on air ride. It's been supercharged. It, it, it's like, basically in a nutshell, I'm 50 next year. I was going to buy myself a little present, like a silly car. And I thought, all the silly cars are so expensive. I want something that my boy's going to love going to nursery in. And I saw this truck at a show and I thought, I've got to have that. So it's got the old patina on it, it's all rusty looking. So it's actually a very modern car with brand new engine on an old shell. So it wouldn't look out of place here, I don't think. So next year I'll bring that. Um, that's my dad's car over there, the R06, as I said earlier. Love it. A little bit too good in a, in a weird way. And I also have a, a Tesla, the, the Model Y Tesla, which I like more than I thought I would. There's, yeah, I know, you're looking at me, I know. It's, you just get in here and drive it, it's really easy to drive, it looks after itself. But, you know, like Sam said, there's so many different cars here, and what, what, whatever your budget, whatever your style, I think we all here appreciate cars, new, old, kit cars, and I think Sam, a lot of people who be standing around yours all day, as am I. I know what someone's offered you to buy that already, and you said no. It's a special car. It just makes me smile, and, and considering the Gumball 3000, like I said earlier, is the most prestigious sort of road rally you can go on other than the Cannonball. But for me, to have it livered up like this is, is something that I don't think I could ever change. I think it's special. I was awake for three days straight getting this car running, driving tires, brakes, service, sneakers, and I just think it looks like it's doing 100 miles an hour. It is pretty cool, right? Oh, it's amazing. I love the kick cars because they democratise the ownership of really rare and special cars because for most people, particularly when you drive down the street, that's a Lamborghini. Yeah. And actually the things that don't make it a Lamborghini, in fact a slightly different body work is different engine, just make it easier and cheaper to live with. So I've never been sloppy about kit cars because to me they open up a world of fun. You might never be able to afford otherwise. So that should be a kit car. They even offer a lot of money to sell I think it should be that. You are right, I mean these cars come along once in a while until something really comes up that's gonna like throw me into a different rule book. Then maybe, but for now it's going to stay with me, I'm going to keep hold of it. And uh, Shmi 150 is huge at the moment on YouTube. And he's always hated fake supercars, kit cars, he's never really been a fan. But he was just... That's because he can afford the real ones. I know, right? He was looking at it going, this is cool. And so this year on the Gumball, there was two first ever. So he drove... You got around him, was that one of them? I got around him, um, but with your credit cards. <laughs> But yeah, we had a bit of fun. This was the first fake supercar ever at the Gumball. And Schmid did a different car every single day on the leg, which is the first also at the Gumball. So that's usually a fake supercar, real hair. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, you, if you can't beat him, it's always a I can't believe he's 50 next year. We need to know what beauty are you. Just how do you look that good at 49? To be fair, I, I've massively abused my body over the years, so I'm like, yeah, believe me, you might think I look like I'm inside and dying. And I, I'm about to have an operation on both feet, I, I'm in bits here, but there's one vehicle I have seen that's caught my eye, which I can't wait to visit, and that's the ice cream van, it's over there, so nice shout, boys, I'll get to the first line on my feet. I think we'll have a little walk around, because as I said, we are going to choose part of the show, so we'll have a look around, 
We're not sure if the mic works all the way over there, but if you want to chat to us about cars or anything in between, just grab us. We're here to enjoy it just as you are. Have a fantastic day. We'll be back on the mic soon. Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, enjoy. Also, guys, if any of us here, if you like whatever we do, if your dad's not here and you want us to do a video message for your dad for Happy Father's Day, come and grab us to do a video message for your dad as well. Bears, Over at Sporting Boys, we have to make a tiny donation to Sporting Bears and we're just going to have that. There you go. Put a pound in Sporting Bears and we will do Father's Day messages for you. And one more thing. So last year they donated an amazing, staggering amount of £4,000, right? I think there's so many people here, we can smash that out of the water this year, guys. So if you haven't already, get over there, get involved, get your wallet out, get your dad, your son, your mum, your grandma, even a stranger in one of those cars. Do a good thing for the day and have some fun, right? Pay forward if you just use somebody like a car. Just give somebody a nice day out that you don't even know. It's a nice thing to do. It's nice to be important, more importantly, nice. Exactly, here's some music. It's not like that. 
but this does make a nice noise, so uh, let, let's have a listen to this, the Mustang. There we go, five litres of in this one. This is a good engine. Oh! Oh, it's a Anybody go more than this? Well, I'll squeeze it, guys. That's coming in for a cuddle. Have we got any more, Sam? Have we got any more? The Mustang over there. Is there any other contenders out there? Laying down the gauntlet. Would anyone else like to enter the ring, as it were? Oh, hang on a minute. We've got the GT uh, SM350. Yeah. Over there, so maybe we've got to hear that. Yeah, sure. Who would like to hear that? I'd like to hear that. We've got to have that for a chance to have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's hear your roar. Come on, who wants to hear it? Yeah! Yeah. So guys, before we finish, 
finish it and give you our results. I just want to tell you to know, is everyone having a good time? Yeah. yeah! This camera here is live. I want you to tell everyone, are you having a good time? Yeah! Right then, judging. Paul, come on, that's over to you. Well, it's down to the crowd. The crowd have spoken, and the crowd have said it's the Shelby Coop. So yeah. let's give a round of applause there, yeah, guys. Amazing. Well done, everyone. Right, that's it. We'll give your hands on to us. Have a nice week, Jim. The crowd won the mayor. They're out on the road. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for letting us make your town full of cars and noisy and smelly. So, what would you like to say to all the people gathered here celebrating wonderful motor cars? Likewise, I'd like to thank you for hearing you a wonderful show and thank you for everyone for turning up. It's a wonderful day, so please enjoy and make sure you f support us on the future as well to carry on shows like that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Round of applause for our man. Thank you. Right. Well, that's it. We're going to have a little wander around the